What's good? What's good? We're back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pigger, host of the Paul Pigger Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a video where Vince Staples says rap is not considered art, or explains why rap is not considered art. Before we do that, though, I want to give you a word from Promo Palace. That is marketing and promotion then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard a beautiful lady. If you need online marketing promotion for your music, product, brand, or service, please go to promopalace.biz. Also get 15% off music promo at promopalace.biz. Use coupon code Labor Day 2023 in the checkout. You'll get 15% off site wide. All right, let's get into it. Got whole exhibits at the Bro Museum based on her dressing up like this. Miss Haley done that in 15 different videos. It's because at the end of the day, that shit is worth millions and our shit is worth a dollar ninety nine. DIY. Okay, DIYers. So this is a throwback clip from a Vince Staples conversation that he had with Styles P, Joey Badass, and they were all discussing the state of hip hop. This clip has been going viral as of recent. It's so crazy how relevant it is to what's going on currently in the music industry today. End of the day, can we really sit here and say it's art when everybody cool with their label for selling the shit to iTunes for $1.99? Mm. It's art, but we can't pick our own price. It's art, but we create based on whatever niggas say. It's art, but we still make it. Totally videos, agree. mixtapes, and albums. So at the end of the day, we can't really talk about all this shit, but at the end of the day, everybody just gonna let niggas sit here and sign it down the line, get their check and say, get your money, my nigga. That's a fact. So it's nigga, like you said, it become That's a hobby, true. it become a hobby, it become a job, and it become what? So what I'm saying, we, we expect to have Basquiat's, we expect to have Andy Walls, we expect to have Damien Hurst, all these other motherfuckers within our, with our rappers, our producers, our directors, our people like that. We expect to have Cindy Sherman's with the way that, like, why is Miss Yelly not Cindy Sherman? When she put on a space suit, why Miss Ellie not in the mocha? When Cindy, I gotta stop for a second. This brother, this young brother, is very, very smart and intelligent for his age. He's very intelligent. I just wanna, I just wanna throw that. Out. Got whole exhibits at the Bro Museum based on her dressing up like this shit. And Miss Ellie done that in 15 different videos. It's because at the end of the day, that shit is worth millions, and our shit is worth a dollar ninety nine. There is an imbalance, a very obvious imbalance, and we know there are reasons for that. Because rap is held in such a low standard by folks who don't participate in it or by folks who don't respect the craft that it is. Vince is saying part of that reason is because of the way that our art is interpreted is not actually parallel to the way that other art forms are interpreted or celebrated. He brings up Missy Elliott. There are people who get celebrated for their risky and edgy approaches to fashion. Well, Missy Elliott's been doing that for since most of us were kids. I know that there's a lot of names that we've been exposed to our entire lives and we've been told how much of a genius they are. Even though I know when I was coming up reading Hamlet in high school, that shit was whack as hell. No disrespect. R.I.P. Shakespeare. But there's been so many people that have been pushed in front of our eyes as being the geniuses of art, the geniuses of writing. That nigga can't rap a 16, though. No. Can he rap in double time? Huh? Therefore, art thou. Shut your ass up, boy. That nigga sell, you know, 50,000 ounces, 5,000 ounces, and all he's bum. But it's only one of these paintings a piece. Mmm. We'll say that then, Vent. Say that then, Vent. That let me stop right there. So, I mean, that's a good point. Like these paintings, you know, Andy Warhols and stuff like that, they Mona Lisa, that's just one of them. And that what that's what makes it so valuable. And then you got this single that you know, back in the physical days, there was however many copies they pressed up, and that's how many copies there was. And we know in a um, economic world, 
a lot of monetary value is put on things when they're rare, when there's not very um, many amounts of them, like baseball cards, like Michael Jordan rookie cards. There's not a lot of Michael Jordan rookie cards floating around, you know, things of that nature. The, the very first Jordans, you know, people put a lot of value on things when there's only small amounts of them. And artwork is at the top of the list. And music, there's music is in abundance. There's just there's too much damn music. Say that then, Vince. A rapper who puts together this piece of art, because I consider it an art form. Of course I would. I write. I'm a rapper myself, been so for many, many years. We equate the value of a rapper and their body of art by how many records they sold, by how many streams they have. We are judging the value of their art. Isn't it interesting how a rapper has to sell 200,000 copies to even be considered something worth being noteworthy? But if they which is the complete opposite of a painter. They sell one copy of this amazing painting. And voila, they're, you know, top dog. You got to sell 200,000 copies of your joy as a musician to be considered anything. Sell 50,000? Ah, man, that art is trash. When you compare it to a painter, they sell one of one and it becomes something that nobody else has access to and it gets sold for millions. People don't laugh at that one on one getting sold, but you only sold one painting. People don't laugh at that. Now, when you compare it to hip hop, you ask, has that ever been done before? Yes, Nipsey Hussle came through and revitalized and reinvented that idea. We ain't never clown on nigga for only selling one painting or only being in one museum or only or, or only, only doing one movie, only doing two movies. We clown. It's 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 like you said. It's not about the music. So what I'm saying is that's why that was my Lloyd Banks point. If it's not about the music, and the motherfucker want to make music when he start out about the music, niggas gonna get in his ear and his head gonna get fucked up to the point like, oh that's not right now, or that's not the flow right now. Blah. When you take joy from niggas. If the artists that he's mentioning, Basquiat, the Andy Warhols, Ernie Barnes, is all the legendary artists that you can think of. If those artists live today, what would it look like? Would they be using only these particular colors because color psychology tells them that blue gives really good feelings within human beings? So then would we have a completely different collection of Basquiat paintings because somebody got in his ear and told him, hey, you should probably make vertical paintings from here on out and you should probably only push them on TikTok. Would we even be able to enjoy that quality of art? Would it even exist if we put a Basquiat and we sit him down in this air and tell him the things that we tell rappers on a daily basis? No wonder so many people don't view rap as an art form. When I it sounds like what Vince Staples is saying here is that once you sign with the labels and once people start getting involved in telling you how to create the music and what you should you should do this and say this because it's cool and, and do, rap over this beat because it's cool or do this hook because it's cool or do this feature with this cat because he's cool. It sounds like what he's saying is that's when – it no longer be, it's no longer an art form. It's no longer about the art. It's no longer an art. It's all about what's cool or what, what sells or what's going to attract attention. What's going to get clicks. Sat down with this artist, Stevie Crooks. He broke down his perspective on what it would look like if Basquiat was indeed in his modern era. It's got to be done. Bro. And that's why I brought up Basquiat is that you said mm -hmm. Basquiat how would he exist in this time period right now? Like, how would, what would he look like on social media? Would he be on social media? I feel like someone would be attached to him because the way they, the way that the internet works, man, there would be somebody that would be attached to him that doesn't need to be attached to him mm. and damn near almost try to exploit him at first. Mm. He would break away from that person. Everyone would find out that he broke away from that person mm -hmm. and then he will become exactly who he was supposed to become. I think that's what's happening right now in this really crucial crossroads moment of hip hop is that there are people who don't recognize some people are going this direction because they see hip hop is going home. Some people are heading this direction, but they're not going as fast as you would think because they're unsure about what home means. Then there's people in the middle that are like, yo, just go back there, bro. That's where the bread is at. These things over here ain't making no money. You see now why I say DIYs, we have to generate income? Because when those narratives are no longer able to be placed as reality, when 
you're able to see more artists that are not just making, I'm not even talking about one percentile. When you're just finding artists that are making minimum wage off of their music, which hello, I know you can do that. I know, without knowing your circumstances, I know you can do that. When you start seeing that be more commonplace, how can then you push that narrative to someone? Hey, I'm making the same amount of money working on what I love as a place that takes eight to nine hours of my day or 40 hours of my week. And this crazy part is, to be, to be real, there is a basket out right now. Hmm. And I ain't even talking about myself. There's a basket out right now. Yeah. That's like painting and he don't even want to be seen on the internet. He don't want his, yep. he don't want nothing on it. He don't want, he don't even let his family see his, mm -hmm. or she doesn't let her family see what she's working on. There's an artist right now that's making beautiful music right now that hasn't showed anyone because they feel the pressure from the internet and what they have to do, what they got to get in shape and they got to dress like right. this and they got to look like this and they got to do all of these things. Yeah. And it's stopping them from taking their art to a level where it doesn't matter what you look like. The art matters. When you're good, you're going to be good. Whenever you see folks that are in powerful positions that don't feel powerful, speaking so weakly about the state of the industry, rap is dead, rap is this. All that tells me is that what once worked as your hustle is no longer hustling quite the same way or should I say bustling <laughs> the same way not bussing bustling that's a different word look it up all I can see is the weakness in a statement like that when I see that there's so many artists out here who are taking that extra step getting those Skillshare courses finding that extra way to generate income as a content creator as a mom and pop out of the house ghost kitchen when I see so many of those existing so that they can support their music and they are supporting their music and now they're able to sit there in the studio and create whatever music that they want to create they're able to create at their highest levels of art and that has not always been the desire of every artist you don't need everybody you need the right body you don't need the masses too many of us have these made up stats about what the masses want from us as artists you got to do this nowadays you can't sell this nowadays so many of us have stats and ain't did, a lick of ain't did a lick of research into it. Some of you are neglecting the 10 people that are listening to your music now and don't know anything about them. Some of you sold your first beat. You ever Let me stop right there. He said some of y'all are neglecting the 10 people listening to your music now. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, that's the thing. Like, I can't call a lot of these people artists nowadays. If you're just making music and rushing out, just because of the get numbers and hit algorithms, there's nothing artistic about that. You're just you're just um, gambling at this point. You're just playing the lottery. You're just buying scratch off tickets. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll you'll win and get some views. Maybe you won't. You know, to me, like there's very few artists when you're talking about rap right now. You know, as far as mainstream goes, it's really, you know. The Drakes, the Kendrick, Drake, Kendrick, Cole, Kanye, Rick Ross, you know, artists in that caliber. Everybody else, like NBA Youngboy, I don't look at him as artists. It's, he's just making music to achieve a certain amount of numbers. He, he doesn't care about the final product. I don't know that he, and if you don't love this, I really can't say you're an artist. If you're solely in it for the money, I really can't say you're an artist. And the great Wally Roker, rest in peace to Wally Roker, um, father of my good friend Chris Roker, used to say that we're in the entertainment business. This is the entertainment business. It's not the art business. It's the entertainment business. Your job is to entertain. Yes, there's some cats that are very artistic with their flow and their music. And that's why their music is timeless and considered great. But for the most part in rap, yeah, I don't know, man. Dollar ninety nine. If I'm paying a dollar ninety nine for something, I don't consider that art. I don't consider it a dollar art if I'm paying a dollar ninety nine for it. And if 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 there's like a million copies out there, I don't consider that art either. I consider that um, a <laughs> A, a print, a copy print, you know what I'm saying? 
it's just it's just a print as far as I'm concerned. I, I agree with everything Vince Staples said in this video, and I agree with damn near everything that comes out of his mouth. I can't never hear – I've never heard nothing come out of Vince Staples' mouth that I'm like, ah, oh, that kid is totally off base. This guy, I mean, he totally gets it. He totally gets it, man. He is very, very smart, very intelligent, very, very intelligent. Um, Cassidy, excuse me, Cassidy to listen to Vince Staples a lot more. And I, I actually need to check out his music a lot more. I need to support his music a lot more. Um, ain't really my, he ain't really typically my cup of tea, but when he talks, Every time he talks, I'm like, yo, I got to hear what Vince Staples got to say. I mean, dude is younger than me, and he be saying some sh stuff sometimes. I'm like, damn, I never thought about that, you know, because he's just – he – the doubles in the details, and Vince Staples gets down to the details. He digs down to the details. He's got common sense, common knowledge. He applies it across the board. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we're in, we're in the entertainment business. You know, some of y'all are nah, you know, screw you, Paul. My music is art. Nah, my music is, makes people either bob their head or dance, which is entertainment. That's what music does. It makes you bob your head or dance, which is entertainment, you know. I mean, we can we can try to apply like, oh, it's an art form to do. It's an art form to do that. But if anybody can do it, if any and everybody can do it, is it really an art form? You know, if any and everybody can do exactly what you do, and and when I mean any and everybody, is it an art form? No, not to me. You know, I think we're in the entertainment business. That's just been my perspective for a while now. I used to be one of those that, you know, thinks hip hop is an art, you know, rap is an art, things of that nature. But I don't. It's, it's you know, it's always been about entertaining people. Parties have always been about entertaining par people. And hip hop really started with the parties in the parks. So... I mean, you could say, hey, well, scratching a record is art. Mm. You say so, but I don't agree with that. I I agree with Vince Staples that rap is not really art. And he really said rap, but the music business in general is not really an art. It's, a, it's an entertainment business. It's all about entertaining. And you don't have to be artistic to entertain people. I repeat. You don't have to be artistic to entertain people. There's plenty non-artistic people that are entertaining because they're just funny and hilarious or something. There's just something about them that's entertaining. Not everybody is entertaining, you know, that is artistic, that it's entertaining. And anybody who says otherwise, that's bogus, that's bullshit, it's horseshit. There's plenty non-artistic people that can entertain. I mean, shit. I, I've i seen heroin addicts entertaining, crackheads that are entertaining. You don't got to be artistic to be entertaining. You know, and we're in the entertainment business. So once again, thank you for tuning in to the Paul Baker Podcast. Don't forget YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, BitChute. Uh, Twitter and LinkedIn for the video version of Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Diesel, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slack, or iHeartRadio, Player F, and much, much more. Comment, like, share, and all that good stuff. Thank you for tuning in. Peace, and I'm out.